Or maybe um, at Survivor Series, we could see something like uh, six versus six, elimination tag. The Shield and the Wyatts versus Punk, Brian, um, the Usos, and the Rhodes. How's that for a Survivor Series match? Well, called that one, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, the ending to Raw this week, uh, what was an otherwise very lackluster show, the ending was really, really cool, and uh, hopefully they set up a bunch of things to happen down the road, uh, not just at Survivor Series, but beyond that point, um, because I think mixing these 12 particular guys, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, the Rhodes Brothers, and the Usos, uh, against the Shield and the Wyatts in a Survivor Series match. Um, not only is that going to be an awesome Survivor Series match, if uh, they execute it well, uh, that could be the best Survivor Series match in years. I can't remember the last really, really good one. Um, maybe the Raw versus SmackDown 1 in 05. Maybe uh, the Raw... Uh, what was it? Uh, the Baby Faces versus Evolution in 04. At, the last like great one I would say was probably Team Bischoff, Team Bischoff versus Team Austin at uh, 2003. That was a great one. But um, we haven't had many like really good Survivor Series matches in a long time. So this is their chance to have a really really strong one um, with all those talents and characters and personalities and storylines all intermingled together. Uh, it, it should make for something very very good. Um, and, man, I mean, when they had the Shield and the Wyatts interact, first when they started fighting each other, and then when they formed an alliance, um, the crowd just ate it up, and they just got it instantly. They didn't have to over-explain anything. They didn't have to have long dialogues to, uh, you know, get the moment over or anything like that. It just happened, and it felt very natural, and uh, everything that happened. And when they started fighting, uh, the fans just ate it up because they knew that it was awesome because you had two heel factions who are really two sides of the same coin, um, very dominant, very rarely have they been made to look weak, or have they failed. I mean, for the most part, they win. I mean, the Shield's not undefeated anymore, but they're, for the most part, I mean, they win a lot more than they lose. And the Wyatts, I think, have been undefeated since they started. Except, no, I take that back. Uh, CM Punk did beat Luke Harper in that one match, but even so, it was... Um, they've rarely lost, and typically when the three of them are together, they you know somebody's going to get beat up. So you got these two three-man factions that accomplish similar goals, but are very different characters and very different aesthetically and different in-ring styles and uh, overall presentation of the group. So mixing them together is a brilliant idea. And then when they form the alliance at the end and you know realize that their common enemy was CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Um, that also got a huge reaction. That got a huge uh, pop, and also set out the you know it set up for the Rhodes and the Usos to come on down and help uh, again, tying into previous storylines that had already been established. So this is very well crafted and very very good, and I think could make for a very strong Survivor Series match. But going forward, um, they could realistically. Um, build up three, three or four WrestleMania matches uh, out of this one match. Um, and I can't remember the last time any Survivor Series matches had any kind of long-term implications. Uh, and if you look at the original Survivor Series back in 87, um, basically that show was used as an excuse to get Hogan and Andre in the ring together without really giving away the title rematch. So it was kind of a preview to doing Hogan and Andre 2, which they did months later, leading into WrestleMania 4. Um, and, you know, the whole thing with the double referees and DiBiase buying the belt and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time since uh, a Survivor Series match has had that kind of, like, long-term implications. I think at Bret Owen in 93, that's when they started having their riff. Um, you know, Luger and Yoko were on opposing teams, and they ultimately clashed at WrestleMania again. Um, but, it, you know, it's been a long time uh, since that kind of forward planning has really come to play. As far as I can figure, um, if, if it's happened since then, uh, I mean, if it's happened in the last five years, I don't remember it. <laughs> this, but, um, but, yeah, this is a really cool thing to do. And the matches they could build, well, obviously... Shield and Wyatt's. That's a match that needs to happen. People were saying that that needs to be a WrestleMania match, and this could be the starting point, the launch pad of eventually setting that up. Um, and where does you know where does the authority fit into all this? And and by the way, um, I was willing to give Kane as an authority figure. I was willing to give that a chance, 
And then I saw Raw this week. I'm like, nah, he's just another boring boss character. It's 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 boring already. <laughs> it's like, wow, the luster of that came out, it fizzled out pretty quick. Um, which is sad, because I thought Kane looked good in the suit when he came out uh, the week before. I was like, oh man, yeah, big red machine, he's styling and profiling, look at that. Uh, but now he's just like, okay, he's just another boss character and doesn't really have any authority over anybody uh, beyond what a normal boss character used to. Like, you know, he's really not above Brad Maddox or Vicky Guerrero in any kind of significant way. Um, so, whatever. <laughs> Screw that. Um, but yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see, are the Wyatts acting on the McMahon's orders? Or, you know, because we know the S.H.I.E.L.D. are, but are the Wyatts, and is that why they went after Daniel Bryan? Um... Who knows? We don't know yet, but that'll be an interesting cog in the storyline to really play with and uh, develop as things go. And um, that's a match that I would really look forward to seeing. I think um, just the strength of the characters and the dynamics of the two factions. And, uh, you know, you put those six guys in like a no disqualification all out street fight, tornado tag style. I think it could be an awesome match to have at WrestleMania. And that's something I would certainly build uh, to that point. Um, another match they could do, I've talked about it before, I'm not as sure if they're going to do this now, because they might do Daniel Bryan versus Triple H, I don't know, which, you know, this Survivor Series match would tie into that if the Wyatts are acting on Triple H's orders, but, um, obviously Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk for the title, uh, that's been discussed, um, as a possible WrestleMania match, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but it'd be interesting if it did, and they could very well set it up here by having... Punk and Brian form this alliance against the Wyatts. Um, and, you know, kind of like the Mega Powers. I, I call them the IWC's version of the Mega Powers, or the modern day, you know, the 2013 version of the Mega Powers. But um, uh, this could be the starting point of eventually, you know, get them interacting now, and then when you start doing the WrestleMania build up, you can set up the match. Maybe uh, Brian wins the title, and. Uh, Either Brian wins the title or Punk wins the title and then the other one wins the Royal Rumble and then you set up that match. And then the McMahons tear their hair out because um, their main event is going to be the two indie guys that they didn't like in the, the WrestleMania title match. So uh, there, there's, there are different things that they can play with here and uh, uh, really make for a really good Punk and Brian match. And this could be the starting point of it. And another match they could do is one that's been talked about for years uh, and rumored and uh, apparently Cody and Goldust have been pushing for it for years too, and that's Cody versus Goldust. And again, this is something that they could easily do. Um, again, I already mentioned Brett and Owen at 93, where Brett collided with Owen and caused Owen, or what happened? No, Owen collided with Brett, knocked Brett off the apron, and in the confusion, Brett, uh, Owen got rolled up and pinned, and he was the only one from his team eliminated. And that revealed the whole, you know, he's the younger brother that's jealous of his older brother's success, and he's been living in Brett's shadow, and uh, led into their WrestleMania buildup, and ultimately their SummerSlam buildup. Um, they could do something like that here. Either Cody feels he's not living up to the Rhodes family name, and, you know, turns on Goldust as a way to prove himself, or Goldust feels that uh, Cody's like this young up, you know, upstart that's um, getting pushes that he never got when he was that age or something. I don't know. I'm just playing with ideas. One of them could turn out. Probably, I think Cody would probably work better as the heel there because I think the nostalgia crowd is just not going to want to boo Goldust. Um, and it's fine because Goldust has actually looked good in this run, so I'm not going to complain. Um, Goldust has done just fine. Uh, some of the best work of his whole career, actually. So, um, that's a match I wouldn't, I would be totally in favor of, the whole brother versus brother thing. So, they could use that as a starting point here where the one that's going to turn heel gets eliminated in this match. And then that starts their whole, like, dissension and ultimately break up. You know, break up and ultimately they feud heading into WrestleMania. Uh, so that's something they could do. So, I mean, that's three WrestleMania matches right there that this one awesome Survivor Series match could build. So uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing how this whole thing plays out and how uh, the match comes off. And I'm only assuming that this Survivor Series match is going to take place. It just seems extremely likely based on the way Raw ended this week. I can't imagine them not doing it now. Um, I, I mean... <laughs> it was, and it was exactly the 12 guys that I said it should be, which is kind of funny. But I, I do think that is going to be this six-on-six six match. I can't imagine them doing anything else with it. That would be... I mean, why even... Why not do it at this point? Because everybody seems so excited for it. When it, I mean, the ending to Raw was really the only noteworthy thing on the whole show. So um, I would go ahead and do the match without any question, especially since... Um, 
You know, for a storyline purpose, you know, Big Show versus Orton is fine for what it is as long as Orton retains the title. And, uh, I mean, Big Show wins the title, I'll just groan. But, um, uh, and Cena versus Del Rio, nobody gives a shit. I mean, seriously, uh, <laughs> Cena has to overcome the odds with the arm injury again to beat Del Rio. And I'm like, he's already done that. He already did it last month. So, what's your story? You're just spinning your wheels. Nobody cares. And by the way, Damian Sano beat the living crap out of him for like 10 minutes attacking the arm, and it meant nothing because Cena won the match anyway. So what drama is there? Do I really think that Cena's going to lose this match? No, I don't. I, I really don't. I mean, if he does, fine. But they don't have me convinced that there's even a remote possibility that Cena could lose this match. And that's a major problem in the storyline. Um, so I don't care about that match. But uh, this Survivor Series match, this might be worth the price of admission alone. So... Uh, Again, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I think this could be a really good one, especially with all the talents involved. The Shield works great with anybody. The Wyatts are great characters. Um, I want to see Bray Wyatt and CM Punk go at it on the mic. I think they could have some great uh, verbal exchanges. Uh, the Rhodes have been very good. The Usos have been very good. And then you got Punk and Brian, who are just awesome in general. So I think this could make for a one hell of a Survivor Series match. So uh, here's hoping I'm right. Um, and that's all I've got for now. So... Uh, yeah, I apologize for the delay on this video, but I was busy this week. But um, I'll be back sometime next week with more Survivor Series-related videos. I do have one uh, Survivor Series video that I want to make, and it's kind of a tie-in to a video I did last year. But uh, I'll get there when we, you know, we'll get there when we get there. But until then, that's all I've got for now. Enjoy your weekend, and peace out.